G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Right, Sunday evening here in Australia, the market has held on to $2.1 trillion, only just, us, us <laughs> sorry, is up ever so slightly at $2.14 trillion. So up 1.9%. So the weekend is sort of almost over. It's still just sort of uh, getting through its processes over stateside time. So it's just sort of going Sunday over there, whereas it's Sunday evening here. And look, you know, maybe that's it. And, you know, Monday we continue on an upwards trajectory. But look, there are no guarantees uh, in life. We'll just have to wait and see. But holding 2.1 trillion, which is nice. I was thinking that it could possibly go under 2 trillion. That wouldn't have been so great. Volume down, again, to be expected, particularly uh, over in the States at the moment, September 11th, uh, things like that. Uh, I'm guessing not too many people are probably trading, particularly on weekends. Uh, and look, Bitcoin price almost at 46,000 not too far off which uh is you know neither here nor there it's not great but it's not awful either in all fairness uh eth gas price has been coming down very interesting so let's have a look we can see there's a few things up obviously because the market's up uh, almost two percent what's performed the best in the last 24 hours right there we go avalanche getting a nice pump Tron, out of nowhere, doing all right. OMG Network, uh, Elrond Gold, Polkadot, uh, Aave, got a nice little pump there. So we got some nice movers. And again, that's to be expected when the market's up just a little bit. What about losses though? What hasn't fared so well? Nexus Mutual, uh, 11%. Uh, Quant, again, that's nearly 10%. And then Tezos, Ecash, Waves, Icon, One, uh, Harmony, so Radium. Look. None of the losses are really that bad. And there we go, Solana, a little bit more of a loss, but it's up from where it was. I think this was down in 160 the other day, so we'll have to wait and see how they all sort of hold. Yeah, pretty kind of sideways moving. Couple of nice gains, couple of, you know, not so bad losses. All losses are bad, but, you know, uh, in the crypto space, you know, you lose sort of 10, uh, 12, 15%. Not so bad, but after that, it definitely does start to hurt. Let's go to the Bitcoin chart. No, thank you. Right, so as we can see, dropped outside of this upwards trending channel again and traveling sideways. As I suspected, we still haven't come down to really test that 42,000, which is good. It's holding, but we'll just have to wait and see. And is Monday morning when the markets open, that's stateside time, is it going to you know, refresh the markets or is Asia going to come in because they sort of come in a little bit later tonight and are they going to uh, pump the markets? We'll have to wait and see. But at the moment, you know, 46-ish sort of thousand dollars, that's not so bad. Again, considering we went all the way from down here, which was 30,000 and that was less than a month ago. Oh, sorry, a little bit about six weeks ago, all the way up to sort of 50, what was that? 52 and a half thousand. That's that's a reasonable amount. So again, pullbacks are to be expected, particularly when I've said, you know, there's people trying to shake the new money out, particularly those going long, then they're going to panic and they're all going to put in shorts and guess what's going to happen? It's going to pump and then all the shorts get wrecked. As long as there's a little bit of what they might consider excess money involved in leverage, well, then the price is going to definitely uh, move all over the place. And again, sometimes it'll go with the leverage because they want to get people super excited about it. And then when they're a little bit over exuberant, boom, some big players will come out and they'll count in the trade what uh, the sentiment is. That's the way markets work. Uh, they have for a really long time and I don't see that changing anytime soon. But I'm all right with Bitcoin at 45000 It's not so bad. Uh, it definitely could be worse. And again, maybe we got to do a fair bit more sideways traveling before we start to pump back up. Or again, still a definite possibility that this is a dead cat bounce and could roll over. I don't think that's what's going on. But look, that's just my personal opinion. None of that's financial advice. You know the drill. I'm not a financial advisor. All right, a couple of stories I want to have a look at. One in every four Americans is in favor of legalizing Bitcoin in the U.S., now, this is a bit of a sort of clickbait. It is young Americans that said that. But that tells you where things are going. Old people eventually pass on. That's a you know horrible thing to think about. But look, it happens to all of us. And more and more young people, they're leaning towards cryptocurrencies. 
So again, I say this, America's not going to ban uh, Bitcoin and you know cryptocurrencies. And again, because of all the stuff that's happening overseas in the world, I don't think they're going to go too hard on it. It's you know they are going to go hard on the real bad stuff. Don't get me wrong, legit scams and things like that. They're going to come down heavy on that. But you know the good projects and things like that that may have been breaching some regulations originally, but now you know just decentralized enough and you know have actual good tech and can help change the future for the better. They're not going to come down and regulate the backside out of them. They just can't because other countries are already starting to regulate cryptocurrencies now and America will not be the last one to do it. I can assure you they just can't afford to. I mean, we can go over here. So the SEC, and this is the kind of regulation that we need though. So the SEC has charged yet another ICO for its failure to register while conducting an $18 million uh, token offering. So Revets Corp, and I'm guessing this was probably a bit of a dodgy one because I don't know anything about it. Uh, and that makes me guess it was probably dodgy and there's already been complaints and things like that. I could be completely wrong, but again, I haven't heard anything of it ever uh, until now. So maybe it was a little bit shaky. We'll have to wait and see. Look, maybe they're a legit project that just didn't work out. Who knows? But I do want the SEC uh, and I do want regulation. As I said, and I've said this a ton of times before, and I, you know, I'll say it again because that's what I do. I just don't want over-regulation. Over-regulation is what will hurt the market and what will help pull the world out of the broken financial system that we have, the one that is literally unfair and just hampers you know, the little guy from ever being able to pull themselves out uh, of that space. Crypto changes that. Will it change it forever? I don't know. You know, maybe big players can get in and totally manipulate uh, that in the future. We'll have to wait and see. But I do want regulation to protect from the actual crappy stuff and the completely illegal stuff that's out there. But if it's, you know, maybe sort of starts off a little bit just dodgy against the rules, but it's actually a good project, then maybe, as I've said before, we don't need uh, crypto laws to fall under what the SEC already has. Maybe we need a completely new agency that understands crypto and regulates it to work for crypto not to make crypto fit into old regulations that again were part of a system that was broken and just kept the poor poor and kept the rich rich that's not a system that we want we want a system that's fair for everyone i believe crypto does that that's me getting on my kind of high horse and harping a little bit but that's what i truly believe all right last but not least Again, yes, we're having a correction at the moment and it feels a little bit scary and it even feels scary for me. I've been in the space for four years and I still get a little bit shaken by stuff like this. But I've just been in long enough to know that even if I'm wrong, and let's say we are going into a bear market, I don't think we are, I'm simply going to hold. The shit projects, and excuse the language, the crap ones, they're probably not going to do so well. Particularly in the long term, they may never get back to old all-time highs. I like to think I haven't invested in any real shit ones. None, no shit ones at all, but that doesn't mean they'll last. Good ones can still fail. But from what I've learned is if I simply hold long enough, generally, within four years' time, I'll be well in profit. So that's what I'll do if I'm actually wrong. I'm not going to panic sell. It just doesn't work. And I mean, I'm lucky. I'm in the fortunate space that I invested uh, at a really good time in sort of March, April last year. Uh, and it's unlikely any of the cryptos that I bought will ever go back down to those prices. Not impossible. It's definitely possible that it could happen, but I think it's just unlikely. So really, if I hold, I'll probably, at maybe worst, end up around about even. But, you know, more than likely, I'll still end up uh, in the green, as I'd say. So, but anyway, I've gone off topic a little bit. Pantera Capital... Their latest crypto fund has raised $369 million since July. That's only like a month and a half ago. The crypto investment firm had $4.7 billion uh, under management in August. So it's August now, but maybe they got uh, even more. Maybe they got a little bit less. Maybe they sold off. But this shows you that Pantera Capital is still pulling in millions of dollars. They're getting that money from the big end of town. That's who puts their money into Pantera Capital. It's not the average retail investor. We don't do that. And the average retail investor generally doesn't have $369 million that they can invest. Big money has that kind of money and they are putting money into Pantera Capital to invest for them. That should tell you something where this space is at. All right, I'm not going to take up too much uh, more of your time. Uh, Sunday evening here, again, 
we'll have to wait and see what happens Monday morning. Monday morning doesn't automatically mean we're back off to the races and everything goes high. We could still go lower. Definitely possible. Or maybe we just kind of travel sideways for a little while. And again, if everyone gets too bullish, too many people are diving into longs, I'm going to say we're probably going to have another uh, squeeze downwards. But as soon as too many people start to go short, getting in a panic mode and thinking they're going to short Bitcoin, which a lot of people try to do, then all of a sudden I think Bitcoin makes its next move upwards. That's just what it's been doing uh, for basically ever in a day, ever since leverage got in here. Once people could go long and short, uh, you know, if everyone's going long, then it'll go long for a little while until the big money goes. Now it's time to short uh, and they increase because they put in a nice short. And again, they take profits. Then they use those profits to buy back in cheaper uh, and it's a never ending cycle. Hence why I like to be an investor, not a trader. You know, I have done a little bit of trading, but not that, not the leverage trading, more kind of swing trading and things like that. And as I've told before, on occasions I get it right uh, and it does quite well. Most of the time I usually just kind of break even, but I've definitely got it wrong on occasions as well and lost money. But if I've lost money, 99% of the time I just hold and eventually it turns out all right for me. So hence why I like the investing part more than the trader part. All right, that's it for me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. If you're on that gain train at the moment, congratulations. Uh, we are up a little bit, so generally most of us should be. If you're not, you know, personal advice, not financial advice, is just hold. Uh, eventually the good times will return. All right, that's it from me. I'm out.